so good to see you again. For those of you who are new here, my name is Sarah. I'm super, super excited for today's video. As you guys can tell by the title, this is going to be a video where I'm going to go through all of my Holy Grail makeup products. Like these are the things that I'm like hardcore, like I die for them. But before we get into it, if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Just click that red button down below. That way you can be notified of all of my future videos. Also, you guys, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And also in the comments below, go ahead and tell me some of your like holy grail products that you think that I should test out. And just to let you guys know by holy grail what i mean by that is like it's my ride or die like i've repurchased these or if this is a newer ride or die product it's like i do fully 100 percent plan on repurchasing it like it blew me away so there's a lot on my table in front of me so i'll just go ahead and jump into it that way we can get rocking and rolling and if you guys want to go ahead and press pause grab a snack grab some water Feel free to because there is, there's a lot to go through right now. All right, so starting down at the skin with the base, I am going to start with primer. I do want to preface this with the fact that I actually don't have like a favorite like primer for makeup. I haven't like found any that's made my foundation or anything seem like so much better than the foundation is yeah i haven't like really found anything for like under my makeup that i'm like oh my god this primer is amazing i love it but i do have a favorite primer for you know when i am wearing like barely any makeup or no makeup at all and you guys have already seen this you saw it in my very very first video if you're a returning person if you are not a returning subscriber please make sure to subscribe and then you guys can go check that video out. But it is the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. I love this thing and also really quick, so sorry about my nails. I was like fighting against the daylight. I ran so many errands today and I wanted to fix my nails for you guys, but I was all like, it was getting down to the point of like, okay, I'm either gonna have light to film or I will be filming in the dark, but at least with nicer nails. So I figured I'll just film. I'll try not to flash these janky nails in your face too much. But <laughs> the one that I'm talking about right now is the Milk Blur Stick. I really love it for no makeup days. It really just gives my face like a kind of like a soft focus filter. It kind of blurs everything out, just like the name suggests. And it makes my skin just look like really, really good and almost like airbrushed. I do wear it under makeup sometimes, again, Underneath makeup, I'm like, eh, it's not like I'm, ne I'm like necessarily seeing a huge difference, but I do like it just because it fills in my pores a little bit too. But yeah, mainly for like no makeup or minimal makeup is what I love this one for. The next item is a new one, so I haven't repurchased it yet, but it's amazing and I love it and I will repurchase it even though I got sticker shock. And it is the MAC Strobe Cream. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> Like, why did it take me so long to get on the Max Strobe Cream train? Like, this thing has been around for years and years and years, probably, like, since before I started doing makeup. But, like, oh, I love it so much. It gives my skin such, like, a dewy but natural, healthy kind of finish and glow. And I really love it, again, on no makeup days, though I am wearing it underneath my makeup right now. I also forgot to mention, I am wearing most of these products on my face right now. I did like a full face of my Holy Grail favorites just because also that way, like I went through my full face routine and like I didn't miss anything. So yes, the MAC Strobe Cream is one of the items. I just, I love the finish that it gives my face. I love like putting it on the high points of my cheekbones or anything when I'm wearing like no makeup or minimal makeup. And it just really gives my skin a nice healthy look. It's kind of like, oh damn girl what's your skincare routine? Because like, I gotta know. And I'm, I'm gonna be like, it's not my skincare routine. It's the Max Strobe Cream. <laughs> Moving right along to foundation. I have two different foundations to show you guys. One is more for like everyday-ish. Like I don't wear foundation every day, but like one is for like, you know, when I am gonna wear foundation, maybe I'm going out to dinner, maybe I'm going out with girlfriends or something like that. And then one is for like super high coverage, like if I have some sort of event, like if I'm going to someone's wedding or if I'm gonna go shooting or something like that or somewhere where I'm gonna be taking pictures, that's what I use the second one for. But we'll start off with my first one, which is like my number one, Holy Grail. Like the first time I tried this foundation, I was like, 
Oh my god. Oh my god. This is amazing. But it is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. You guys, I love this foundation. I love the finish that it gives. It's like a nice satin natural finish, but I, I am oily, but it doesn't leave me oily. It's perfect, and it looks like your skin, but better, and it's light. It's not too heavy. It's not too cakey. It's just like this perfect formula. I currently wear the shade Sand, and it's like a perfect match for my skin. I love the shade range for Too Faced with their foundations. Like they do an amazing job of making sure that like everybody is included. So you can definitely find a shade for you. And they describe this foundation as undetectable medium to full coverage foundation. And that is like a hundred percent true. Honestly, like when I put it on, I look like I just need a little bit of mascara and I can go. Like, you know, foundations, like if you put them on, but you don't like finish the rest of your face you're just kind of like what the fuck girl you didn't finish your face like your face looks flat with just foundation on put on some freaking bronzer or something but this one isn't like that it really does look like your skin but better and I love it this is my third bottle of it so this really is like a ride or die for me the second foundation that I'm going to show you guys I have two of them right now but it is actually the one that I'm wearing on my face I love this foundation. I'm looking at it on camera right now and I'm like, oh, it's just so good. It's so good. And actually what's really appropriate about like the foundations is that they come from two of my favorite beauty brands. Like these are my top two favorite beauty brands is Too Faced and then Jouer. So this foundation is the Jouer High Coverage Cream Foundation. Oh my God, yes. Let me tell you. So at my cousin's wedding, not Jill different cousin but she was like the woman of honor there and she opted not to have someone professionally do her makeup she asked if I would do it instead and I said of course happy to and I used this foundation on her and she was like what the fuck is this magic this foundation is amazing like it makes your skin look perfect just like absolutely perfect but it is like as opposed to this one, you do need to finish your face with this one because it is like a full like blanket cover of just like perfect skin, like perfect pigment. It is extremely high coverage. It will cover up everything and it gives this like beautiful airbrush kind of like finish. And oh my God, your skin just looks so good with it. Now, the reason why I have two though is because I order these online at Beautylish. Shout out Beautylish. This video isn't sponsored. I wish it was, but this video isn't sponsored. I just really love Beautylish because like, it's a terrible, terrible habit of mine. Basically Beautylish, you can purchase makeup from their website and you can split your payment on the haul or whatever, or on your purchase into three payments. I have like a running tab with Beautylish. Like I have like a monthly bill with Beautylish because the second one's paid out. I'm like, okay, time to reorder. But I did get this from there. So I was terrible the first time and I just like picked a foundation, which like was probably super, super smart. <laughs> so this is actually way too dark for me. Actually, it's not. So I picked this out when I was at my tannist and at my tannist, I can wear this. It's still like a touch, just like just a tiny bit darker than me at my tannis but it's still fine because like I'll even it out with like concealer and stuff but this matched to my cousin perfectly and the shade that this is is in chai again way too dark for me so I have to mix it with cashmere which oh my god this story on cashmere I swear to god so I used the Sephora shade finder and I used born this way like in sand as like the match for it and then for some reason it suggested cashmere to me and then when I got it and I put it on I was like this is way too light even at my palest this is way too freaking light for me so I'm too lazy to return it or exchange it so I just combined the two of them together and it's perfect it's what I have on my face right now is a mix of these two but I would suggest if you're gonna get this just freaking go into Sephora and like shade match yourself because like honestly this is ridiculous. Moving right along to concealer. And like, you guys, do I do I even have to? Do I even have to go into this with you? Well, maybe for those of you who are new, I'll go into it. But like, if you watched my e.l.f. camo concealer versus shape tape video, then you, you, you already know what's coming. Like, 
just, yes, like shape tape. Like, do I have to say anything else? It's amazing. This is the greatest concealer ever. I don't understand why other beauty companies are still trying to make new concealers. This is it. This is it. We're done. Like, purchase it and never use another concealer again because it is perfection. It is worth every penny of the $27 that you pay for it. 100%. Even against the e.l.f. Camo Concealer, which was five bucks and I wanted to love that one. I really did because like paying almost $30 for concealer is like, honestly, do I have to do that? But yes, I do have to do that because this is the greatest thing ever. If you haven't watched that video, let me give you the rundown. It doesn't crease. It gives you an airbrush finish. It is full coverage, but like it's perfect full coverage. Honestly, I will on like a like barely there makeup day, I still use this even though it's full coverage because it blends out so beautifully. It it's just it's it's the it's the greatest concealer ever. Like it's I I can't even like keep talking about it because I'm just like that's all you need to know. It's the greatest freaking concealer in the world. Tarte killed the game when they came out with this. They killed it. This is perfection in a freaking bottle you can wear when you have a full freaking face of makeup you can wear it when you have barely a face of makeup and also really quick disclaimer please don't judge this concealer by what my under eyes look like right now if you saw my last video i explained i am reacting to using rapid lash on my lower lashes so i am super puffy under there it's getting better like this side is like almost there but like it's getting better but like i was puffy and then i am getting these really really crazy rough dry patches underneath my eye and like no concealer is going to conceal that it's still going to stick to it so please don't judge it by like that but like i like don't judge this concealer by like here judge it by like here <laughs> where my skin isn't all janky and gross and reacting terribly to something but yeah if you guys haven't tried this concealer and also by the way it surprised me on my last video how many people are like oh my god i've never heard of or tried shape tape i was like what wait what like when this came out, like people couldn't stop talking about this concealer. I'm like, how have you not heard of it? How have you not gone out and tried it? Because like, again, perfection in a bottle. Since we were talking about concealer, I'll go ahead and talk to you guys about my setting powder that I use. This powder is like an industry secret. Not a lot of people really know about it or talk about it. So this powder got like a boom in recognition because some bigger beauty gurus like Jaclyn Hill and Katie Lesterlux started using it, but it is the RCMA powder. You guys, this powder I think is six bucks. It's so cheap and look at how much you get. I know that it looks like a little Parmesan shaker, which like clearly I love Parmesan. If you guys also watch Revel and Row, you saw me dump practically like a full container of Parmesan on my pizza. If you haven't seen that vlog, go watch it. But yeah, it looks like a Parmesan shaker pretty much, but I love it. Like you get so much product. This is my second bottle. My first bottle still actually has like, my first bottle still has like this much in it, but it's lasted me like over a year and I use it daily. I really do. So yeah, this powder, like it's one of the ones where I like, I'm like, I have no complaints. I have zero complaints about this powder. I know that some people have said that it kind of gives them like a little bit of a yellow cast, but I haven't personally experienced it with this powder. So I mean, it, you know, people react differently to different products, but it is a no color powder. <laughs> but yeah, the full name is the RCMA no color powder. And yeah, it's just a great powder. It sets my under eye really well, not too thick, and it makes my under eye concealer last all day, although I am using Tarte Shape Tape, so like it would last all day anyways, but this really seals it in. And the way that I like to apply it is I just take a damp beauty sponge, like dip it into the powder and then just press the powder into my skin. And that's mainly how I use it. And then sometimes I do use it to bake, like when I just want like a really cut jaw, I'll use it to bake. It works perfectly for that. I mean, I could never go out and pay like $30 for a setting powder because this is like, why would I? There's no complaints on this powder. It's just a really great powder. Now moving along, I'm like, which direction do I want to go and not my base? Let's go to, let's go to face powder. Like we, let's keep it in like the powder, powder range. So I don't know why more people don't talk about this powder. I don't know. Maybe I'm alone on this one, but I really love this one. This is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro powder. I use Sable, which is number 21. 
and this is actually my second one. I hit pan on the first one not that long ago, so this is like a pretty fresh one, but this powder is just like, it's the perfect setting powder for my foundation. Like it doesn't cake on on top of the foundation. It kind of like settles into the foundation. So it's not like I have this thick layer of face makeup on and it just sets really, really beautifully. If you know, if your foundation like ended up a little bit sheer in some areas, this really just like covers everything up as like that second kind of barrier and it makes my foundation last so long. I love this formula, honestly. And like this lasts me so long. I just swirl my brush in it once and that's enough to cover my entire face. So if you guys like haven't heard about this powder, definitely go check it out. It's available at Ulta. It's available at Sephora as well. And it's just like a really, really good face powder. Like I, again, just like the RCMA ones, like I have no complaints. It's just a fantastic face powder. So moving on to contour, I have two different products to show you. And then this is contour and then I'm gonna do bronzer. So whenever I go out or like I have an event or if I'm filming like right now, so I do have this on me right now, I like to do a cream contour just because it gives like that little extra level. But okay, so I'm kind of weird with my contours. I don't like to use actual contour powders. I like to use foundations because like I feel like they just set better and also like I feel like a lot of cream contours or contour powders they all come in like a palette and I'm like I don't want the other color I just want the one contour color and that's why I like to buy foundations that way you know I'm getting just the one color that I need and also too like I really love that the makeup industry is really coming out with larger and larger foundation ranges so I can really find like a contour shade that fits for me because there's been so many times in a contour palette or something like that where even the darkest shade just like it just doesn't do it for me. So I really like that I can go into a lot of foundation ranges and just like head over to like the darkest side of the spectrum and really find one with the undertone that I need. So for my cream contour, I love the Makeup Revolution Stick Foundation. I think, what's the full name? Makeup Revolution Fast Base Stick Foundation. I currently use F14, which is this color. I think it's like pretty much their darkest color. What I like about it is that it is cool. Whenever I do contour, I like to do a cool contour. I don't like a warm contour. So I really like the stick foundation for it. And with this one, a little bit goes a long way. Like the first time I tried to do it, I like swiped it on and then it was like, I was blending for legitimately 10 minutes because like it is so pigmented and the product stretches so much. So now I just do just like a little doot doot and then just like one dot and then just like a couple dots on my chin and that's it. That's all I need. I don't need any more than that. And this is just like the perfect kind of contour color. It gives me just like that. I mean, you guys can see it right now. It just gives me that good definition right where I need it to be because it is so dark and it is so cool. So it really does paint that illusion of a shadow right there. So I use that and then I also use it with another foundation. This is a powder foundation. You guys, if you've been following me for a while, on Instagram. You guys have heard me talk about this, but this is the L'Oreal Paris True Match Super Blendable Powder. This comes from the Cool Collection. I like that L'Oreal splits up their foundations, so they have like a warm range, a neutral range, and a cool range. So this one comes from the Cool range, and this one is Coco. This is what it looks like in the pan. It's just a Again, sorry about my nails, but it's just like a perfect contour shade. Again, just like the F14 from Makeup Revolution, I like that it's cool, so it's painting a shadow where I need it to be a shadow. And then the nice part about this being a powder foundation is that it lasts and it really, really shows up on my skin. Again, one of my main problems is that a lot of contour powders just don't show up on me and this one does and it's sticks like it stays so that's really why I prefer to use foundation when I contour just because I just feel like I get more wear out of it and I'm able to get more range out of it and then too with this one just being like a drugstore powder I think these are like 10 bucks or so so it's like really cheap I do use another shade I use cappuccino sometimes when I want believe it or not sometimes I do want a warmer contour like if I'm doing a really bronzy look I'll use a warmer color so I use cappuccino which is from the warm range I think it's like the equivalent same like 
deepness as cocoa, but it's just like the warm version of it. So I'll use that one as well. Like sometimes in the summertime, again, when I'm doing like a bronzy or warmer look, I'll use that one to contour. But for the most part, whenever I contour 90% of the time, I'm using cocoa from um, L'Oreal True Match. And then moving on to bronzers. So on the daily, I actually just bronze. I don't contour because like that's going to take too long. And this is the bronzer powder that I've been using and I absolutely love it. I don't know why more people don't talk about this powder again, but this is the Cover FX Bronzer in Sunset. This one does look a little bit light, but it does actually show up on me, which I like. And I like that it's a little bit on the lighter side because it's just like a nice kiss of bronzer. Right? Like, like, it's just a, like a nice kiss of color, I guess, <laughs> is how I'll go ahead and put it. It still gives me some definition without being like overly bronzy. And I actually use it on my cheeks and in my crease on my eye because like whenever I do like my daily makeup for work, I, I have a 10 minute makeup routine that I do for that. And I like to multitask my products a lot, so I'll multitask this to use on my cheeks and in my eyes so that I don't have to pull out like an eyeshadow palette. And it's just the perfect color. Again, not too deep, just a nice kiss of color to warm up my face and give me a little bit of definition. So moving on to blush, I only have one that I want to show you guys. I'm not like a huge blush fan, and I really wish that I was because I feel like blush can just like do so much to elevate a look. But for me, with blushes, I'm like, yeah, blush is a blush. I'll like throw on whatever. But there is one blush that I am like crazy about. Like I have to actively try to not use this blush. And it's a classic. It is the MAC Melba blush. It's just like this perfect wash of like neutral pink. I think like the, oop, I just dropped something. I'll show you guys that one in a second. But I think the first time I ever like went to go take a look at MAC Melba, I was just under the impression that it wasn't gonna show up on me at all, but it actually does. Like, I don't know if you guys can see in this lighting, but I do have it on me right now. And it's just an, a nice, perfect, just like subtle wash of pink. And I like that it's subtle because then I can wear it with just like about any makeup look. Like if I'm doing a colorful makeup look, I can wear MAC Melba, I can count on it to still look good with it or if I'm doing a more neutral look obviously the skin go really great so I just think it's like a really great classic color and just like a staple that everybody should have in their makeup collection I'm gonna go ahead and move on to highlight just because the highlight is making me really nervous I'm really scared to show this one in the camera because it's gonna make a mess because it's broken and I just did not have time to like order a new one like I'm already getting it all over my hands but I am wearing it right now like I said there were two makeup companies that you guys were gonna hear me mention at least a couple times in this video so here is my second mention of Jouer this is the Jouer powder highlighter in citrine oh, I love this color so much it's just it's so intense I'm not wearing a liquid underneath my highlight, like this is the actual highlight. I didn't enhance it by throwing on like my jelly highlighter or a liquid highlighter. This is really just like what it looks like on the skin with just like a swipe with a fan brush. So I'll go ahead and open this up for you guys. This is busted up. It's, it's a powder essentially at this point, like a loose powder at this point. This is my one, my one problem with Jouer's highlighters. They are really really soft which is nice because it makes them nice and buttery and they like melt into your skin but like they break really easily so oh my god this is this is giving me anxiety are you guys ready to see this this is pretty bad so that's what it looks like <laughs> that's the color it's falling everywhere oh my god i'm gonna close it now because you guys can see it on my cheeks that's more interesting than this <laughs> this is really bad but anyways, this highlighter is amazing. I just love the color on me. I love the intensity. And so, ooh, I'm like, I need it. I'm like, I want to describe the color to you guys, but it's like easier if I see it. So I know that it says citrine, which makes it like seem like it's gonna be more of a yellow color, but it's actually not. It's, I'll try to show you guys again. It's kind of like got this like bronzy pinkish undertone that just like it goes perfectly on my skin and I do know for a fact that it looks really good like on paler skin as well so it looks good on tan it looks good on pale because I first heard about this oh my god seriously I first heard about this highlighter when Jaclyn Hill featured it on her channel and she's pale 
Like, she can get pale. I'm not, that's not shade. Like, she, it's, it's the honest to God truth she talks about all the time. Like, if she doesn't do a spray tan, she is ghost white. And she used this highlighter, and it looked so great on her. So this is a really versatile color. It can work on just, like, about anybody. So moving on to the item that you guys just saw me drop. <laughs> it is my favorite palette of all time. Literally another one that I'm like, I have to fight myself to be like, no, don't use that one. Use something else. But it is the Anastasia Hills Soft Glam palette. I love this palette. It has everything I need in it. You guys can tell, like, I've given it some love. It's definitely a well-loved product for me. That's my one thing with Anastasia palettes is that, like, I like the velvet because it's so luxurious. But, like, look at how disgusting disgusting it gets honestly this palette looked like this like a week after I got it because like it just catches everything but I'll go ahead and show you guys the inside so this range of shadows and colors is just like absolutely perfect like if I go on vacation this is the only thing that I ever need to take honestly because it just has everything that I need it has neutrals it has warm colors because I love warm colors on me so I mean if you're a f more of a fan of like cool tone eyeshadows this may not be the palette for you but if you love neutral to warm eyeshadows this is it like you don't need anything else in your life and I love that I can like pretty much have everything that I need if I want to do a neutral like matte look I can just stick to these if I want a little bit of color I love this color mulberry right here and then like dusty rose is like a really great like almost pinkish purple color I love noir in here if I like on the daily if like I don't want to do like an actual wing liner I'll use noir so it's really the only eyeshadow palette that I need daily and then these shimmer foil shadows are just beautiful one of the ways that i love to refer to this palette is like it's anastasia beverly hills's like greatest hits palette because they've got tempera which everybody in the industry knows like tempera is such a good inner eye highlight i'm wearing it right now i'm wearing it on my brow bone also to orange soda is like a long time favorite from them Burt Orange is another one, Sienna is another one, so it really has like all of Anastasia's best colors in this palette, like the most versatile ones, the ones that you definitely need to have. And then my favorite color personally in this palette is Mulberry. I like that it's like a nice deep berry. I'm wearing it right now in my crease, like on the outer corner, and I just like, it's perfect. Like whenever I want to do an eyeshadow look, but I don't want it to be too crazy, but I still want it to be interesting, I'll use Mulberry because like I like that it's this rich kind of wine color but it's not too purple it stays more on the red side which I love like I love red eyeshadows so yeah this is my favorite palette of all time again like if I had to give away my entire makeup collection and could only keep one eyeshadow palette that like 100% without a doubt this one would be the one which is like such a problem though because like like I had said earlier I have a terrible time actually like using another eyeshadow palette like I'm just like so you like I just keep grabbing this one like, and I'm like, no, you need to vary up your eyeshadow palettes because I have a lot. I have, like, a lot of eyeshadow palettes. Actually, let me show you this. This monstrosity. So, Soft Glam lives here in the front because, you know, front and center for my favorite one. But these are all eyeshadow palettes that stay out on my vanity. Now, I have a drawer full of more eyeshadow palettes, like literally a full drawer of other eyeshadow palettes. Like this is just the tip of the iceberg. So I really, really have to like tell myself like stop just using soft glam. Like you have so many eyeshadow palettes. It's ridiculous. Like stop using just the one eyeshadow palette. But if you guys also want to see like a vanity tour, let me know. Leave me a comment down below and let me know that you guys would like to see a vanity tour. It may take me a while because the room that my vanity is in is this room that I'm filming in and it is a disaster. Like, it's really bad. Like, there's a giant pile of wedding gifts that we're not opening until we move sitting over there. We have a recliner that we don't use sitting in the corner over here. My desk where I record my podcast is, like, a nightmare. There's literally two, four, six coffee cups there with dry coffee in them. So I need to clean it up. But if you guys want that, I will clean up this room and I will do a vanity tour. Just let me know. Oh, and also, too, that eyeshadow holder that I was showing you guys, I got it on... Amazon, I'll make sure to link it down below, and obviously too, I'll link all of like these products down below. But moving right along to the rest of the eye makeup that I love. So this next one, I like to use this in conjunction with another product, but it is the Inglot Gel Eyeliner. This is number 77, it's just their black one. And 
I fell off of this for a while just because like if you guys use gel liners you know like the pots will get like really dry sometimes so it had dried out on itself like you guys can even see there's like a crack in it and I just like just I was just like nah, you know let me go back to like felt tip liners or like true liquid liners for a little bit which was great but then like my liquid liner ran out and I was too lazy to get a new one so I was like oh let me revive my Inglot gel liner and I'm like why did I ever stop? Because honestly, you get so much more control with a gel liner and a brush than you do with like a liquid liner, in my opinion. So I'm like, yeah, back to gel liner, 100%. But like the formula is actually really good when it's not dried out. It goes on so smooth. It's so pigmented. It's so dense. It's like a perfect, like I'm wearing it right now. It's like a perfect dense black gel liner. So to counteract that, I use another product from Inglot. This is Duraline and this is basically there's no description on it But it's basically a kind of like gel cream product reviver It literally brings your dried out products right back to life if you are using something like whether it's like an eyebrow cream or a gel liner and you're like noticing you're knocking a lot on your brush You don't even need a full drop. Honestly, you need to just like barely touch a section in the pot with Duraline and it will instantly just make it like it's brand new again and it really is just like a savior for your gel or cream products so if you haven't ever tried this definitely go check it out i get mine from beautylish again i keep just buying everything off of beautylish but yeah so if you're a gel liner fan or if you use any kind of cream products definitely check this product out to revive your makeup and then as far as like regular eyeliner goes the one that i have been obsessed with over the last year or two has been the stila smudge stick waterproof eyeliner this is just like a great liner i love that it's the twist up i'm not a huge fan of pencil liners just because like i hate the feeling when it's starting to get dull and then like i don't notice and then the freaking like wood scrapes against my lashes or against my waterline because that's really the only thing that I use like an actual pencil liner for is like my waterlines because I know you guys have heard me say before but I don't have lashes like they're straight they're short they don't exist so I always need to tight line my lash line so this is just perfect because like the formula is just like so creamy and then with the applicator I don't have to worry about like scraping or scratching my waterline with wood pieces I don't have to worry about wood pieces flaking off in my eye that has happened to me and then I love that this is just so creamy because it really gets up and in between all of my individual lash hairs so that I can create just kind of like a seamless thicker lash line which if God would just bless me one morning with a thicker lash line, I would be so happy. But, you know, probably not going to happen. But I have repurchased this about two or three times. It's really great. It actually lasts pretty long considering how creamy it is. I think that this lasts me like about six months each time, which isn't bad. Because if you are someone who uses a lot of like twist up eyeliners, you know that they can run out really, really fast. But I use this one daily. And yeah, I, I don't have to reorder it that often. Moving on, I realize I probably should have done this product. Like if I was doing everything in order, I should have done it before the soft clam palette. So sorry, but that's okay. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep going along. But it is a classic that I think people have forgotten about. I'm so annoyed that no one uses this anymore besides me, but like, I love it. It is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. Like seriously, super, super classic product. This thing has been around for forever. Ever. I remember this was the very very first eyeshadow primer that I ever used and then I tried a few others and I just like I've noticed I just keep coming back to this eyeshadow primer it's just like it's perfect it really does give my lids a good base for me I don't necessarily have like very prominent veins or anything on my lids so I don't need anything too opaque I just need something that'll help counteract the fact that I am oily and help the shadow adhere to my lids and honestly this primer does exactly that now if you are someone that does have to deal with like a lot of veins on your lids or a lot of discoloration this one maybe won't work for you you might need something a little bit thicker but if you have like average normal lids this is really really a great product definitely check it out if you've never used it before Again, it's a classic. Urban Decay has had this like since the freaking beginning of time. So you know it's good because it's lasted that long. And then for mascara, this is going to be the second mention of Too Faced. 
I love this mascara so much. I This is just like Tarte Shape Tape for me or like I know that it's expensive, but I'll pay the freaking money for it. I don't even care. But it is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Waterproof Mascara. <sighs> you guys saw me purchase the refill in my last haul, but like this is such a good mascara. Honestly, again, I barely have any lashes and this thing will just like give me as good as I can give. <laughs> like it really gets every lash and plumps them up and lengthens them. It does everything that I need it to do short of being false lashes. So this is what I use daily because I don't wear false lashes every day. That would just take me way too long in the morning and I'm always running late for work. But this is what I use every day and it actually gives me lashes, albeit they're not lashes that anyone's gonna be like, oh my God, I wish I had your lashes because that'll never, that'll never happen for me. I need a moment. This mascara is just like, it's so great. And I did in the beginning, I tried the non-waterproof and I was in love with it. But then when they came out with the waterproof, I was like, yes, because I just need my mascara to never leave my lashes during the day. Come rain, come shine, come crying. I need like my lashes to continue to exist. So I got the waterproof, which I love. And it's just a great all around mascara. Really the thing that's fantastic about it is this hourglass brush. It just makes your lashes so fluffy and so long and plump. I can't say enough good things about this mascara. It really truly is my holy grail. I will probably never stray from this mascara. Now, I do only use it on my top lashes, which I've explained before in previous videos. I don't use it on my bottom lashes. It's just too thick. Like the, the brush is too big for my bottom lashes because my bottom lashes are so delicate and so fine that this is too much for it. If you're wondering what I use on my lower lashes, I've been going back and forth. Honestly, I don't have a favorite lower lash mascara. Nothing's blown me away. Everything's adequate. I used to have a Holy Grail lash mascara, but I don't think that they make it anymore. I can't find it. It was the L'Oreal Telescopic mascara, which I know that they still make, but they don't make the waterproof anymore. At least I can't find it. I've gone to Target. I've gone to Ulta. I've gone to Walgreens. I've gone to CVS. I can't find the Telescopic in waterproof, which I hate. And like the lower lash line is especially where I do not ever want to be wearing non-waterproof mascara because like I wear contacts so my eyes water throughout the day. My eyes are really sensitive to getting stuff in it especially with contacts so like my eyes will end up watering and stuff like that and I just like I don't want to run the risk of my bottom mascara like running on me so I only use waterproof and it really really bums me out that I can't find that freaking mascara anymore. If you guys have seen the L'Oreal telescopic mascara in waterproof please tell me where the hell it is because like I've been lost ever since it's disappeared from the shelves here where I live. So someone please help me out. And yes, I have searched online. I can't freaking find it. It's, it's really bumming me out. All right, moving on to lashes. These are the lashes that I'm wearing right now. I love them so much. They're so fluffy and like I have small eyes. So like a lot of lashes can overwhelm me, but these are like fluffy and dramatic without overwhelming my eyes and I love them so much. I actually just got a fresh pack. I wanted to wear it today, but I was like, no, let me leave it in the pack. I'll wear like the pair that I've been wearing the last couple weeks because they do last a while and you can get them at the drugstore. So like it's a good deal that they last a while and you can get them from the drugstore, but they are the Eyelore Lashes in number 143. This is from the Exaggerate line. <sighs> These lashes, like, do you see? Do you see? I love that they're like not too long on me. Again, I have small eyes and they don't overwhelm. Like you can still see my eyeshadow through them, but they're still fluffy. Like I know a lot of people tend to use like the spikier, wispier lashes when they want to be able to see their um, eyeshadow through them. But I love these just because you get the best of both worlds. They're nice and dense and fluffy, but you can still see everything through them and I think they're like seven bucks. So like they're not like the cheapest drugstore lashes, but they are so great. Whenever I go to Ulta or Target, I usually just pick up a pair just to stock up. I really hate that they don't sell these in the multi-pack. Like you can only get like one per pack on these, but it's still so worth it because they're so great. I do have to trim them. They are too wide for my eyes. So I usually trim off like 
about that much, believe it or not, because I prefer it when they're shorter so that they don't go too far into my inner corners because then, like I said, I do tend to have watery eyes and then it'll make it start coming off and stuff. So I do cut them pretty short, but they still, like even with them cut practically in half, like they still make an impact. Right, and then going along with lashes is my favorite lash glue. Now, if you've been following me for a while on Instagram, you've seen me call out a different lash glue way, like months and months and months ago as my holy grail lash glue, and I still do like it. It is the Lashes in a Box lash glue, and it's good. It's really, really good. I, sh I shouldn't say it like it's good. No, it's really, really good. But I ran out one day and... I was in a cycle with Beautylish because that's where I get it from, <laughs> where I was like in the middle of payment so I couldn't put in a new order. So I just like went to the drugstore and I was like, I'm just going to get a freaking lash glue here and like hope that it's good. I'm not going to get Duo because I'm so sorry. I don't mean to talk crap on Duo, but Duo lash glue sucks. It sucks. Eyelure lash glue is okay. It's it's okay. But yeah, I was like, I, I don't want any of those. I need to find a different lash glue. So I was at Target and I found the Sonia Kashuk Eyelash Glue Duo. This lash glue is so good. And the only, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why I like it now more than lashes in a box lash glue is because I can just get it at Target. It's, you know, it's so easy to get. But this is a dual sided lash glue. There's the clear and then there's the black. I honestly, like, I know that, like, most people lean towards using clear. That way, like, the black doesn't, like, end up anywhere. But to be honest, I always have some type of black around my lash line because I need to fill in so many gaps. So I just go ahead and I use the black one, but the, the clear one works just as well. But this lash glue lasts through everything. It's perfect. Like, if you just wait, like, the recommended 60 seconds, it is the perfect level of tackiness. You can stick it on your lashes just like a sticker and it doesn't slide around this has lasted me through weddings where I cry like a freaking baby and it's just so so good and it's so cheap I think it's seven bucks just like the lashes I just showed you I'm realizing I'm like clearly I only pay seven dollars for false lash stuff and I like that I have the two options because you know there are times where I'll do a colored wing liner and clearly I don't have as much black there so I will use the clear and I just like that I have the option to do both and though one of the advantages of using the black is that if I miss any gaps when I'm like trying to tight line or doing eyeliner this black glue helps fill in the rest of it so if you haven't tried it I know I know for a fact no one's really talking about this lash glue you guys should go check it out. It it just works so well. Okay guys, light at the end of the tunnel. I am now on lips. My mouth is so dry because I've been talking for so long, but we're almost there. I only have two different lip formulas to show you guys that I love. So we'll go ahead and get into it. The first is just like regular bullet lipsticks. I don't really prefer bullet lipsticks, but I only have one that I like. And you guys have heard me talk about it before, but it is the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche Lipsticks. These lipsticks are everything that you need. They are long wearing, they are creamy, they are moisturizing, and they are pigmented. They are perfect. I have three shades. I use molasses, pepper, and chai, and I kid you not, I have these in my purse at all times. Like, in order to film this video, I had to go over to my purse and get them out of my purse because I always, always, always have them with me. I always have these three colors with me. And for these, I will go ahead and swatch them for you. This first color is Molasses. This was my very first one. You can tell that, oh, my products are falling, but that's okay. But you guys can tell that this one has seen some love. So like I said, this is my first one. I did get it in the winter time. So like I had been opting for like a darker shade, but it's a nice brown color. And I just love the way that it looks on my lips. It's just... It's like the perfect color for when I want something more than neutral. It's that perfect brown shade on me. And I, again, formula on these, you can't beat it. These lipsticks are pricey. I've talked about it before. They're like 26 bucks, which for a single bullet lipstick is kind of a lot, but it's so worth it to me. I Like these lipsticks blow me away. The second color that I always carry with me is pepper. And this is like a neutral pink color it does have color to it it's not like a nude it's like a, a pink 
with nude undertones and it's perfect for everyday wear like this is the type of lipstick that I can put on without a mirror I just like swipe it on press my lips together and just like wipe my cupid's bow and I know that's gonna look good because like the color just matches me so well that even if it was like a little bit off it's like almost the color of my lips so no one could really tell the difference and then the last color is the original color that I had wanted to get the first time I bought an amuse bouche lipstick but they were sold out and they always sold out but you guys have seen this one before I'll still show it this is chai and it is warmer than pepper so it's like this warmer slightly deeper pink I mean it's a it's pink but it's closer to nude it's closer to nude than pepper is and it is warmer but this like is the same situation as pepper I can put it on without having to look and I just wipe and like it's fine this is a very easy easy color to wear especially if you're tan so my very last product is my favorite liquid lipstick of all time I actually have three of these like I have one in my purse one's lost but it's like lost in this house for sure and then one in my car like I love these liquid lipsticks and it is the Smashbox always on liquid lipstick in stepping out this color is perfect on me it's actually what I have on my lips right now and I remember the very whoops <sighs> and I remember the very very first time that I ever wore it I went out with some girlfriends and all of them were like what are you wearing it looks so good and I was like well thank you it's just like a good neutral nude on me like it's not too nude but it's like a it's like the perfect kind of like color but like almost like I'm not wearing a color I don't know how to explain it. it's just like it's it's the perfect color for my skin tone and for my shade like if I just want something neutral that can go with everything this is it for me and what I love about the Smashbox formula is that like it's not too thick but it is thick enough that it's pigmented because like there are liquid lipsticks like the wet and wild like the catsuit liquid lipsticks I actually love those but they are so thin that I have to keep putting on multiple layers because like you can see some like like some sections are thinner than others so like that one like takes a little bit more effort for me to wear but this isn't as thick as something like LA Splash where it's like if I put on more than one layer like I can literally scrape it off with my fingernail that's so gross but <clears throat> this is like a perfect thickness to it and also too what I love is that it's not drying like I don't think that this is a full liquid lipstick actually I know it says liquid lipstick but I feel like it's almost like a little bit of a velvet it does dry on all the way but I'm like it's not transferring right now but I have seen it transfer but even though it is a liquid lipstick it's still moisturizing like my lips don't feel tight with it they just feel like like almost like I don't have anything on like they you know like that feeling with liquid lipstick sometimes that you get where it's like you can feel it on your lips and like as you're talking you're like oh my god is it cracking like th you don't get that at all with this it's nice and moisturizing again this is a pricier liquid lipstick I forget the price right now but it's definitely in the upper 20s range I think but again super worth it because it is so worth it I do have three bottles I'll go ahead and swatch it for you guys even though I am wearing it on my lips right now but just so that you guys can see it against these amuse boost lipsticks so like I said it is a neutral it is lighter than those amuse lipsticks but it's just like this lipstick can go with anything and it's such a good investment and this formula is just all right guys so that was all of my holy grail makeup products if you guys made it to the end of this video you are a trooper and I thank you for watching the whole thing I know that that was a lot of products and it was a lot of talking like my mouth is so dry right now but I'll go ahead and sign off because I'm sure you guys have had enough of me. I just wanted to say really quick another reminder to leave some of your Holy Grail makeup products down below in the comments. Anything that you think that I should go check out. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at underscore bald ambition. Subscribe to this channel. Like this video if you like my content. And also, don't forget to check out my podcast, Milk and Whiskey Podcast. It is all linked down below in the description bar. And I love you guys. I'll let you go. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.